in a way, you could argue they actually are, there's more computing power in a car than, than in a computer. Uh, they are up to 40 electronic controllers, uh, 100 million lines of software, five miles of wiring, uh, and it's not in an office. Uh, it's out under any conditions on the road, minus 20, um, eight inches of snow, or in the summer, 120 degrees in the parking lot at the grocery store. So it's a complicated thing, and it's getting more complicated. Um, and that, that, so I guess the answer to the question is yes. Uh, the, the electronics content of vehicles has grown tremendously, and there doesn't seem to be an end in sight for that trend. So it's going to keep growing for a while. There seem to be two distinct trends going on. One has been going on for a very long time, um, meaning you know several decades, um, and that goes back to primarily regulation uh, to performing the safety and um, environmental impact of motor vehicles, um, um, electronics to improve the performance, uh, emissions control mechanisms, for example, um, and as regulation increased, the role of electronics became more important. The other strand is much, a much more recent phenomenon, and that is where consumer electronics uh, increases the need for mobility. You have your smartphone, you're at home, you need to take a trip with the car, you're on a call, you want to take the phone with you in the car, but you don't want to hold the phone while you're driving, uh, but you want to continue on the call, for example. Or you're driving somewhere else uh, where you're not very familiar with, you want the navigation system, but then you want possibly live information on traffic, you may want to know where uh, the nearest restaurant is, things like that. So you want to actually be connected while you're in the vehicle to the rest of the world. That is a very new development. Uh, again, that's driven by uh, you know, things that are be have become available to us. Um, but that's, that's a very different trend from the, the uh, longer running trend about safety and uh, performance improvements. Well, um, yes and no, right? So the yes, or yes and maybe, I guess. The yes is it, it can happen. There are already industry events where, where companies will demonstrate to you. Uh, there was a research project, I think, sponsored by uh, the military um, that demonstrated the ability of cars to drive themselves. Uh, will this be accepted in society in terms of legal constraints, or will it be feasible in terms of the economics? How many sensors will have to be put on the roads uh, for this to happen? Uh, for cars to drive themselves, if you and I go to work you know, in two separate cars and, and we can wave to each other on the highway and <laughs> neither one of us touches their steering wheel, will we see this anytime soon? Uh, unlikely. Uh, cars can already parallel park themselves today, uh, and they're sort of minor versions of electronics assisting the driver. Blind spot detection, uh, uh, detection of obstacles when you're backing up, things of that nature. That's already there. That's on the market today. You can buy that today. And that was sort of one of the, the outcomes of this panel discussion is that the, the, the more recent of these trends, the, the one that's driven by consumer electronics and the desire of, of drivers to be seamlessly connected uh, no matter where they are in the car, um, that is a real challenge for car makers uh, on several levels. Um, number one, they have to deal with different partners in this whole process um, because the software behind consumer electronics is not something that automakers traditionally have been familiar with or have had an input in. So now a car maker has to deal with a software provider like Microsoft or somebody else like that. They also have to deal with providers of hardware, uh, things that go into smartphones. All of a sudden, they have to be integrated with what the electronics inside of a car is like. Um, and, and, and the second aspect of this is, so that changes the whole relationship of how to develop cars and what to pay attention to and how to define oneself as a car maker. Uh, the second aspect is, um, I mean, some people keep cars very long, but you know the average tenure of a car is probably I don't know, is several years for sure, but much longer than you would keep your your smartphone, or your even your laptop computer or your tablet computer. So if you're making a vehicle and you're dealing with customers that you know every other year get a different phone and they expect this to work seamlessly in the same vehicle, you have th this is a big challenge, a very big challenge.